Hello and welcome, you fan Levitardians. We're live on YouTube. First time doing this with a guest. We are joined, ladies and gentlemen, by none other than the Mike Fuentes here. Welcome, sir. Well, hello. We've got a. Uh, we've got. <laughs> we've got. Not not too energetic right now. I don't. It's just like <laughs> it's like dark. It's dark too early. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, Has daylight savings been kicking anyone else's ass this year? Yeah, it's 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 supposed to save an hour, like, but it feels like three hours, like later than it should be. Like yeah. right now, it's just turned dark. I mean. I don't know where you live. I know that Nathan lives in Los Angeles. I'm in Connecticut. In Connecticut. Okay. So for you, it gets dark like at three in the afternoon. Yeah, it's bad. Right? So it's, it's, I don't, I don't know. Cause I was sitting here playing FIFA and then all of a sudden it's time to go to sleep. So. Well, yeah, well, welcome. We got nasty Nate here. Just, that's what I do. Cousin B over there. And we're live again. I'm I'm psyched about this. Trying something new, going live, and we want to start out first. Speaking of the YouTube, if if you're a part of the Levitard YouTube Nation here, we've got to thank Fuentes here for bringing back the magic crate of content. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. It wasn't. I mean, it's not in its original form. Before it was something to move Dan off controversial topics. Now it's like 12 minutes on YouTube that might show up on the main show one day, you know, but uh, so it's not in its original form, but I, I like it. I think it's, I think it's all right. I I've enjoyed it personally. When I first saw it, I really liked it. I like the visuals. The box looks great. I love the little. Same, poof same box from the Clevelander. Yeah. Same box, really? box from the Clevelander. I see- yeah. Those- I'm more heavily invested in the YouTube than I was back in the ESPN Clevelander days. I definitely, I watch on the YouTube every day now. My normal habits are I consume the local hour while I set up my classroom for the day, have that Mm -hmm. playing in the background. So I'm like watching slash working. And then I do the rest, mostly podcast. But today when you guys go Grand Theft Auto stuff, I pop on the YouTube and see what you Ash guys look cheeks like. cheeks on cars. Grand Theft <laughs> Auto wise. And Try I just, explain I just, that when you're at the gym and an people actual are walking thing, behind you. Actual thing that happened too in Miami. That was like, I want to say, I, I think it was in like the middle of COVID that was, that was going on. Because, you know, like we didn't really have like, I, I don't want to say we didn't say it. shelter in place for COVID <laughs> in Florida, like, but it was much shorter than everybody else's. So the second that that became a thing where you could go out and there wasn't really an issue, you know, people were getting rowdy. And I've actually been seeing a bunch mm-hmm. of posts of like comparing that trailer to like real life incidents. Same. And um, it's pretty accurate. Yeah. So the, the first couple minutes of this live stream has just been Mike Fuentes on the screen because I've been sitting here in studio mode looking at my next cut and not cutting to the actual <laughs> next cut. So. You're getting a heavy dose of Fuentes, but but I have a I have a confession to make here, folks. Your boy Nasty Nate, I'm I'm a Fuentes fanatic. I I like the <laughs> cut of his jib. All right, his his cocksure, cocky attitude, his his Fuentes top fives, mystery shirts. Oh. Although I I haven't claimed a mystery shirt, but uh. count me among the the few, the many, or the few uh of the Fuentes fanatics. Man, let, let me tell you, mystery shirts was a little crazy. I, I put that out there thinking I might get like seven people. And I just, I don't know if people just wanted to prove Jessica wrong or <laughs> what it was, but I had like literally 70, I want to say 70, 75 DMs asking for shirts. And the thing is like, I could fulfill all those shirts. Like I have a lot of clothes, but I don't want to send like people just black t-shirts because yeah. that's not fun right because then you open it up okay it's a black t-shirt from some random guy in miami so i'm only like sending like old graphic tees and i those i don't have a lot of so i've had one medium that like a, i ordered a shirt the company sent me the wrong one and i just gave that one away today but i want to like the thing is i'm only going to buy graphic tees like i used to so depending on how things go i might just like go down to goodwill and like clear out a rack for like 300 bucks and then that will be like the new mystery shirt thing because i just don't have enough shirts uh-huh. like i'm shocked how many people wanted my old shitty t-shirts 
Yeah. Mike Fuentes, the man of the people. You know what my favorite thing about you is? Your teeth. Your teeth are immaculate. <laughs> I love them. So I had like a, an issue. I want to say like I didn't have dental for, I want to say like four years. So there was no dentist. There was no nothing. Right. And then I went and they were like, listen, your things are banged up. Like you need to, <laughs> you need to fix these. Like, and then, so I had to do like five deep cleanings in a row. And that mm. was just such a horrid experience of like constant pain and blood. And now like I floss, I'm like all about flossing. Hey, that three brush, yeah. Three brushes a day and flossing like that. I mean, print it out, put it on the, you know, in your classroom, <laughs> mate. like you got to get that flossing in. It's worth it. It's not worth the pain. And of course you save a bunch of money on the mm. dental bills down the line. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know about that. I have an immaculate mouth. I just actually went to the dentist and uh, here's what my normal trip to the dentist is. They go, they, they look around, they go, wow, your mouth is amazing. Zero cavities for me ever, all time. So Brian, you want to talk about teeth? I got, I got some great teeth here. Zero cavities. It's always a treat. It's a good pick me up for me personally. I love a good trip to the dentist. And for my routines, I actually, I kind of, a lot of days I only brush like once a day. Wow. Well, yeah. You, so you know how like Mike Ryan brags about everything? <laughs> Nate brags about the weirdest things, like his teeth and how much he doesn't actually upkeep them and yet they're perfect. Hey, but yeah, when you're fine. in a coast when you're coastal elite and you're in California and you lived your whole life eating Whole Foods, your your mouth That's should right. be good. That's why you pay that premium. Yeah, and now you're an Irwin guy, but with your thirty dollar <laughs> bottles of water. What's that place called? Erwan? Erwan or Irwin? So something it's like, like thirty dollar bottles of water, like forty six dollars for a mushroom cap like some craziness like that. I keep hearing about that water all the time. The privilege. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of bragging recently, Fuentes, you bragged on the show a couple weeks ago, mystery crate about thinking you could be a voice actor. So we've got a little special treat for you here. We have the one, the only green means go. He's going to coach you up. Take it away. Brian. All right. So, now I missed the because I'm a I'm I'm the Stu Gatz of this team. Like I listen to the main show, you know, Monday through Thursday, a little reverse oddball situation. And when it comes to like you know the fri the mystery crates and the I kind of tune out. I you know just I just it's Friday. I'm trying to get lit. You know so I'm not, I ain't got time for all that. Right. But but when I heard there was someone on there speaking about voice acting, I was like perfect. That's my thing. You're bringing me into this. And then I heard it was you. And I was like, oh, shit, Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Confidence. I was like, oh, we got to know what this is about. So I'm here to pick your brain while you pick mine. Where does this this not only love, but confidence in thinking you can voice that come from? So when I was a kid, um, I don't know what it was, but I used to like recite a lot of movie lines back to my dad. Right. And he one day he shows up with a book for me on like an acting coaching book. And I remember I was 15 years old. I didn't want to read anything, right? Like I was like, oh yeah, sure, dad, whatever. I'll, I think I might have read the first like 10 pages, right? So then life goes by. My dad was like a thespian. He was all into that like performance star stuff, but he also played sports, but he never really pushed us to do it. So then every once in a while, I would always think like, you know, I could do characters, I could do okay voices, but then I never really got around to doing it because, you know, you had to live life and bills have to mm -hmm. be paid and yada, yada, yada. So then when I started working in television and I started doing, uh, so when I used to work at BN Sports, uh, they owned the rights to the NFL in the Middle East, North Africa and Australia. So nobody at that channel knew how to do American football because they were all soccer people. So they're like, who wants to do it? I put my hand up and that's how like on camera career started. But then... You know, I was like, oh, you know, should I get into the acting thing? I'm kind of already doing the TV thing now, even though it's limited. And then I was like, so what could I do? That's not because my mm. while I feel like I do characters, well, I feel like my mannerisms are bad. So then what takes away from that? You get the acting and then the character does the acting, the physical acting for you. So that's that's what I think I'd be like. I think I'd be a great cartoon walrus. <laughs> or like yeah like an like an excellent manatee okay. you know I, I, like something like that like i like i think i could pull that off like i, like I would have been rocket raccoon like they didn't have that they didn't have to pay bradley cooper all that money all right okay. like i, I, right. I, I, I would have done that perfectly 
Well, out the gate, you're already better than most people. Because usually the response is, my grandmother said, hey, my voice sounds like I should be on TV. So, and and the fact that you didn't say that was already a blessing, because I hate hearing that shit. That has nothing to do with voice acting. I I think I have a terrible voice. I think I'm a mumbler. I think I'm, um, I'm really bad at mumbling. Like, I'm a really bad, (laughs) like, I mumbled on the last God bless football when they did it, because, well, I mean, that's not really my fault. Chris Cody ate up, ate up the whole fourth segment, and then I had to like hurry through Flew my top through five. So the top five, yeah, and... yeah. Chris Cody so ate something. Hit? Not a surprise. Did all of Billy's big board bets hit. Well, Mikey A had to do them this week. Yeah, because Billy wasn't there, and he went three for three. Three. Oh, I thought he was doing what Billy. I thought it was what Billy sent him. So Mikey A. Well, no, no, no. Mike, Mikey himself? A came up with them, and shout out to Mikey A. Mikey A. He hit nailed all three. Him. He nailed all three with he's, a uh, Trevor Lawrence a... injury. Correct. He's he, he's hitting, he's betting a thousand for the nice. Billy, Billy's bets big board brought to you by uh, while Billy's out of town. <laughs> All right. So usually when people get into voice acting, people start with coaching, right? If they're doing it the right way, they start with coaching. Uh, they don't just go off a whim of some Google searches and then just go, what do I do? Uh, generally, people usually charge by the hour. Me, because I'm a nice guy, because I like you, I like the cut of your jib, I like the cut of your teeth. I'm going to give you five minutes for free, right? Nice. Five minutes for free. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a 15 minute script, right? I want you just look over it because often in a voiceover game, we don't get long with scripts. Uh, I know it's kind of like, well, if I have a week to practice something, then I should be able to kill it. You're lucky if you got an hour. So I'm going to give you this 15 second script, right? This is when Nathan is going to put some cute little Jeopardy TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. We're going to give you about 30 seconds to kind of go over it. You know, you said you like the mumble. We want (laughs) to You know. I, I don't say that. I like. I actually, I actually, I hate I do, my mumbling. Uh, We're all gonna die. <laughs> and and as as you prep 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 all that, practice all those things. Don't worry. Talking is hard. I have the same issues. I want to get a couple of reads from you. Okay. Uh, you should know you're you're in the business, right? So I want to A B C out of you. Okay. Three different reads, three different tones, intonations. Whoever you're addressing, who you're talking to, we'll go back and we'll we'll see we'll see what you got. Because personally, I think everyone should be able to voice act. Everyone can voice that. We all got voices. And we yeah. need unique voices like yours. You say you mumble. Well, guess what? A lot of normal ass people mumble. Hey, and oh. Right now, a lot of people are selling products that they want being sold by normal ass people. And a lot mm. of voice actors can't do it. Ah, they're good. used to intonating and uh, punctuality and all this. That's not, that has nothing to do with what the hell I'm talking about. But still, they be doing shit like that. So yeah. I'm going to send this in the chat. Okay. Bang. Take your time, look over that. And as he looks over that, I'll talk to the audience. So one of the biggest issues when people address copy, this is copy that he's, that he's studying right now, is you, you, often, you often find yourself imagining what you want to sound like. And that gets yeah. you caught in your head. And the second that you're caught in your head, it's over with, right? It's, it's kind of like football. Once you start thinking about retirement, guess what? You're done. Yeah. Uh-oh. Unless... You're someone like a Tom Brady, but not all of us can be that. So yeah. with that being okay. said, I think I stalled enough to give him a couple good reads to this. I have a top stopwatch here too, because a big part is, hey, how can he get it under that clock? So whenever you're ready, I'll start the timer. Once again, we want to ABC read. Take your time in between the reads. You know, I know breaths be crazy. And uh, yeah, take it away, sir. So wait, but you got to tell me what an ABC read is. That's like a very See, technical I'm, I'm talking tone. to him like he's in, I yeah. just assumed he was in the business. So no, I, mean, we, I mean, once you say it, I'll probably be like, oh, okay. But, so just know. just three different takes, right? Three different okay. takes. ABC okay. take. Um, generally, there should be some variance between them, but that's on you to kind of figure out because you're the, you're the, you're the thespian. Okay. You're, you're, this, is, this is lineage here. Make your I'm daddy holding, proud. I'm holding the mic and everything. So, okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. Whenever you're ready. ready. Okay. And go. Experience the thrill of soccer with Swift Strikes Soccer Club. Unforgettable moments on the pitch await. Swift Strikes Soccer Club, the ultimate soccer experience. Don't miss a second. Be there. Yeah. Another one? Yep. Experience the thrill of soccer with Swift Strikes Soccer Club. Unforgettable moments on the pitch await. Swift Strikes Soccer Club, the ultimate soccer experience. Don't miss a second. Be there. It's good. Okay, one more. Experience the thrill of soccer with Swift Strikes Soccer Club. Unforgettable moments on the pitch await. Swift Strike Soccer Club, the ultimate soccer experience. Don't miss a second. Be there. All righty. All right. First yeah. of all, out the gate. Cut I think Nate, check. I think our fans here, we should just give him a round of applause. <laughs> because the, the he got he got through all of that with no mumbles, no stumbles. Yes. And he was listen, listen. Now let me ask you, Mike. 
Do you think you hit the 15 seconds on all of those? No, I probably came in a little, a little over or a little under. Okay. My, um, you, the first one, first read, eight seconds. Yeah, under, yeah. The second read, nine seconds. The third read, 11 seconds. So right, generally, pauses. Yeah, yeah. So you're <laughs> you're a smooth dude, right? You and you're also you know slick. You're a con man, right? Cool. And usually when yeah. you want to con somebody, what you do, you get it out quick, right? Baby, come on, come over. You know I got the thing, and don't worry about that. You know, come on. Of course I got rubbers, right? Right? Da, 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 right? Exactly. Yeah. So they're agreeing to things, and you don't even know what you said. So one of the first things I want to tell you is just slow it down. Right. You started doing that in your B and C reads, right? You slow you slow down a bit, a little less emphasis. You kind of had like little intonations where you go, unforgettable months, right? Just unforgettable moments on the pitch of weight, right? Let yeah. it sit somewhere. Like get sexy with it, right? So let me hear one more read where you get sexy with it. All right. Take your time whenever you're ready. Yeah, ready? Yeah. Experience the thrill of soccer with the Swift Strike Soccer Club. Unforgettable moments on the pitch of weight. Swift Strike Soccer Club, the ultimate soccer experience. Don't miss a second. Be there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now let me hear it again as a cartoon walrus. Yeah, that's <laughs> cartoon walrus. Cartoon walrus is gonna have like a bunch of mu like a muffle to it. So I don't want to do a walrus. Walrus probably bad. That was probably a, a, the wrong thing to put out there. Um, your rocket raccoon. Let me hear your rocket raccoon. The rocket raccoon. Experience the thrill of soccer with Swiss Strike Soccer Club. Unforgettable moments on the pitch of weight. Swiss Strike Soccer Club, the ultimate soccer experience. Don't miss a second. Be there. I would book that one. <laughs> that was like a Christopher Walken rocket. Yeah, yeah a little, you know, watch. A little, watch. Watch. It's good. Experience the moment. You know. It's, and I know you hear it a thousand times, right? It, it's, if they get a hundred auditions, it's the one that doesn't sound like the 99 that books it, right? Yeah. And a lot of times it's just them knowing you can take it there. It's easy to pull back if it's proven that you mm. can take it there. And when you gave us those first three reads, yeah, they were different in speed, um, mm. you know, kind of mm. in pace. But for the most part, it was kind of the same guy, same thing. But then when you started kind of going, okay, let me get into this. You're so confident with that character that mm. it came out in the copy. I don't know what you were selling. It sounded like he was doing some mafia shit down at the Swift Strike <laughs> Soccer Club. But you know what? I want to be there because this man knows what's going on. Listen, I'm going to say, you got a future. Me, myself, I pursued voice Ooh. acting as a hobby because, mm. to your point, it was something I could do with my four, you know, my nine to five job. Mm. And then I was like, yo, I can't do this nine to five no more. I'm not happy. I did the Metal Lark thing. And pursued my goals and now your boys out i was just, i just announced i was in a game today world war z <laughs> just saying i'm it, listen and it, it's it's hard it's strenuous used to freelancer contract you know the life right mm -hmm. no no dental no none of that no nothing but yeah whatever you put into it you'll get out of it and what's meant for you is meant for you so i'm saying full full head of steam you got it bro there you go boom writing my two weeks notice right now sorry Dan. don't do that don't do that congratulations <laughs> <laughs> that's huge that's an upset for me folks because i honestly i was thinking that you weren't going to be good at it and i'm a i'm a fuentes fanatic i was thinking they've been, Brian, they've been Brian doubting me good. my whole life because <laughs> if you're doubting me my whole life here i am if there's any fan fanatics out there fan lebitard show some fleb heads flebites you know me and brian we do those God bless high lie hype reels. And there's a definitely a big difference when I get the script in time to Brian for him to do it versus when I have to step in and do it. <laughs> I'm always like, I can't do this. It's not very good. And when Brian does it, I'm like, I don't know how he gets his voice to do all these different things. So big, practice, baby. big practice. upset there. Practice. Yeah. He comes from it. It's in his blood. Listen. The biggest, it, for some reason, when you talk about voice acting, people always focus on the first part and leave off the second part. Acting is the biggest part of voice. Voices don't mean shit. Everyone can sound the same. We all got the same throat box, right? Some people, they can use theirs better than ours, but you know, we all got the same throat box. It's about what you do with it. And well, if you can thing, act. Yeah, that's the thing I always like. Um, so obviously, like, you know, you see, there's plenty of things on TikTok or wherever, and you see these actors and they, like there's a great video of Benedict Cumberbatch 
when he's playing Smog from mm, yeah. yeah, I'm sure you've seen it. And sure, he's just the voice, but he's acting out the character, the facial expression. Sure, they're doing like a little bit of face capture, so he needs to do that. But even just the climbing around, and that's that's when I was like, yo, he's. And then you see like I've seen Bradley Cooper do Rocket, and he's acting out the you know the stuff. So like, and of yeah. course, I think that helps to like the performance aspect of it because obviously, when you sit in a chair, you know, you're not going to really be behind it. Mm -hmm. It matters. It matters. Yeah. Just like you, Nathan, when you act like a teacher and you need to get authoritative, do you do this? Hey, kids, like, stop playing around. Like, get off your phones. No, you stand up straight, shoulders back, and guess what? It comes out different because that's how our bodies work, baby. Listen, depends don't on fight the, kid, the posture. Brian. Depends on the kid. Not every kid you can. <laughs> Some kids you do that, Brian, and they put it right back in your face, sir. Some oh, kids. You know, that's what it. the hands are for. That's what the hands are for. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> then then I better be talking to my union rep. <laughs> um, but speaking of repping things, I don't know how this is related to repping, but we are going to rep some fast food places, and we're also going to interrogate you, Fuentes. Can't let you off easy. I've been interrogating other guests about different Levitard show things, and here's the premise. You need to answer our questions and give us good answers that we believe, not non answers. Or you're gonna steal my or you're gonna steal my bit. That's yeah, right. Know, or we're gonna yeah. the sauce cast <laughs> bit right here. I got sauces right here. And I'm thinking about this. First question here, if if I don't get good answers about it, I'm taking away Burger King sauces. And who's I, that? I, I love I, I love how you're like you're like, if I don't get good answers, but there's no <laughs> there's nothing that like it's not a defined thing because like Something you don't want to hear. <laughs> when you got it, you got it. That's yeah, it. When exactly. you got like, it, you got like, it. Like, I'm not going to lie about it, but you might not like it, even though it's the truth. So you know what? Oof, I might, I might hit you with like two truths and a lie. You know, oh, like wow. you just decide, Two truths and a lie. Decide. See, that's a non-answer. That's a non-answer, Fuentes. <laughs> that would be a sauce review you, right you didn't there. Even ask a, didn't even ask a question. <laughs> if you go two truths and a lie. So here's, uh, here's some of the things we want to know about Fuentes. There's been a lot going on on the Levitard show that has been happening. And myself, I've been dedicating myself for months to figure out what happened to the fine bucket money. So first off, mm -hmm. did you take the fine bucket money? Because I've asked every guest on that we've had, and they've been able to give their innocence. So did you take the fine bucket money? Uh, absolutely not. Hmm. I, don't, I, would, I, I don't even know how much was in there. It wasn't that much. I want to say it was maybe like a little over 200 bucks. I Somebody thought it tells was like my, around about 500. Oh. No, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. But I, I think I'm, I'm sure it was closer to 200 and I'm not okay. going to risk my employment for that. What do you know about <laughs> that final day? What did you uh, see? What do you remember? That final day, I remember we were, uh, I remember it specifically, I mean, obviously because it was the final day, but uh, everybody was in the office. Even Juju was in town. Mm. And I remember we filmed a segment and then Juju yeah. was, like, was like, I don't, I don't know if he was emotional or what, but he was very happy, and he was like hugging everybody. He's like, all right, guys, like, I guess it was just the end of an era, and then, and then, and then he left. And then I remember Cynthia being there, and I think they were filming yeah. a pro promo or something. It was Cody. They were filming Chris Cody, his reaction to Greg Cody's South Beach sessions. No, that was a different day, and that I know that specifically because I've, I've I was the one who me. worked. I was the one who worked on that. Okay. Ooh, so maybe, so, conflicting reports. Uh, See, I've had people saying that. So I, I talked to Cynthia. She, she was there and said that Chris Cody and Coogler were some of the last people there. Talked to Coogler, and he said that him and Chris Cody were there. Coogler threw out there that he suggested, "What if we give it away to the Clevelander staff?" And oh, he said that was money? met. That was met with a little derisiveness, is what he said. Like, oh. We, we don't want to do that. Um, so to me, I'm like, Kugler's innocent. Cynthia's innocent. I guess I believe you. But there's been talk. Here's here's a question <laughs> that I want to know that I, I don't know. The show's mentioned it. There's apparently a video that has been mentioned. Uh, Lewis says he has said video that incriminates someone about the fine bucket. Who's all on the has. video? And <laughs> all he, what is this? All he all he has is video from the last thing that was recorded in the studio. 
So all the equipment was in place. Everything was in place. So it's just basically who may have been around, who may have been around it last. Like it could have been anybody. I mean, honestly, it was probably one of the movers that, that showed up to take out equipment and stuff. They probably said, oh, what's this? Whoop, and that's it. You so know? they left They left the mystery crate box to be transported to the new well, place of uh, magic they crate of content. The money? No, I say? so the, the magic <laughs> crate okay, so box. Here's, but, so here's what happens to the magic crate of content, okay? When I first get hired at Metal Arc, uh, we have a meeting and it's like, hey, you know, like we want to expand, we want more properties, et cetera, et cetera. I go, okay, well, you know, in my brain, I'm thinking I'm going to retrofit the magic crate of content to become its own thing. And I had this whole idea in my head for, I want to say, six months before I ended up posting the first video. So we're getting ready to leave the Clevender, and stuff starts leaving little by little. Chairs, you know, throw blankets, you know, big, you know, printers, whatever, everything's leaving. The Magic Creator content is sitting underneath Dan's desk in the Clevelander. Very small space, right? I said, if I let that get moved, it's going to get broken or it's going to get lost. So I mm -hmm. swiped the Magic Creator content, put it in my car, and it stayed in my apartment for like three months until I felt that it would have been safe at the new spot. And then I brought it back to the Elser and I left it in Studio B and that's where we filmed Magic Creator content. That's a so, convincing answer. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, you know what happens? Like, have you guys, you guys have moved before, right? Shit gets mm -hmm. lost. Shit gets, shit gets broken. It does. And I'm, and I'm like, I have an idea that I think is really good with this box, and I want the box involved, and I don't want to lose the box. So I took it upon myself to grab the box, and bring it back to my house, and when, then it safely made its way back to the Elser. When we moved from Fresno to Lancaster, shout out California folks. We thought the moving people took two of our laptops. And it wasn't until like two years later that we finally like opened up a box that we thought we checked and the laptops were in there. And then <laughs> exactly. Listen, we I traded salute them to in. all my moving people. Y'all not going to both sit here and blame the moving people of America and call them thieves. They cannot be the default. Yeah, my hey, B, those Brian, are the... my B. It's my, it, it but, could have been. But it, with them, it it's, been... it's good. Look. If I, I, nobody related to Metal Arc took it. I know that like there's some theories yeah. out there about certain people. While what are they? What are the theories? What people, you, you won't mention them? No, no, not at all. No, no, I don't want to, I don't, yeah, I have uh -oh. a sauce. You can take the uh -oh. Zestium, you can have uh -oh. it. The Zestium yeah, anyway, top tier sauce. sauce. You know Billy Gill yeah, likes that sauce. sauce. And Fuentes, there's nothing you can do to stop this. You're like, you're on a live stream. I'm just going to talk over you. I'm recording three different ways right now. I got a QuickTime movie going. I've got a Zoom going, and I'm recording all the audio tracks separately so I can just cut it up and post. So there's nothing you can do. We got this zesty sauce from Burger King here. You can have, you can have that one. Only, see, oh, hey, the zesty I'm sauce is the only reason to go to Burger King orange. these days. Yeah. Nice, nice little it's, color color there. It's, that one looks it's a little weird. weird. Looks it's weird. a yeah it looks more like that looks more like a honey mustard yeah right yeah. Dude, west dude, west coast sauce be crazy yeah yeah oh, don't no freedoms over there no yeah. sauces oh, no you preservatives probably, you probably got a free matcha tea when you bought that sauce it does like i'm a little <laughs> you know just a just a single mm, like, so while he gives us that piss poor review next question little little spicy was izzy and a mean a bit kfc is on the line that's a sponsor. I'm no, going to no, no, review no, no, the no, no, KFC no. sauce. Get hands off Spicy, it. Spicy, a little bit of a kick. I think there's some horseradish in here. I'm going to go ahead and say like this sauce Not even is kind of like a... This is, the, okay. this is Brian. I okay. still haven't even reviewed. You guys can talk over. I can edit this all in post I'm except just, for the live people. I'm just going to say that this is like that Smith. sauce. You wanted more out of it, but he's not performing. Like that sauce, it was zesty in the studio that day. That's all I'm going to say. I, that's, I'm saying it was and, zesty. Is this something where if you if you saw the conversation versus hearing it, it you ever seen those like brain tweezers? I want to like, know was it real listen, or was like, it a bit? <laughs> it's like you reading it and it's like brainstorm, and then you hear listen. it again and it's like Yanel, and it's like listen. what is happening here? I think that's what happened. Look, me and me and Amin have become. Pretty good friends oh, over the last little year humble and a brag half. there. Uh huh. I'm 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 a good friends with Izzy too. I just don't see Izzy as much, which is crazy because he lives like down the street. But um, when I asked the mean, "Are you straight?" He's like, "No," and he just kept playing on his phone, and that's it. Wow. Mm. Okay. I let it be. I let it be after that. I was like, "All right." You know what? I already I already dunked it, but actually, I'm gonna 
Brian, what do you? That kind of actually. Well, well, I, I'll be honest with Mike. Given listen, what do you think? Listen, Mister F. We had a situation here where I believed it was real because I've been in those scenarios. Now, Nathan, being from where he's from, I think he might be in scenarios where he hasn't, like he can't size people up like that. Like, like, and it's crazy that the dude from Connecticut is saying that, but you know, Bridgeport, Hartford, like, come on, let's let's act like these places don't exist. Let me straight Cater. Uh, yeah, just you know, and um, it's like he said Fresno to Lancaster. Brian, he look say up Stockton, the Fresno right? stats. All right, come on. Okay, um, <laughs> but yeah, no. So I, I saw it, Fresno. and I was like, nah. The way that I see the sweat going on the side of his temple. That's that's real energy. I, I agree. I like I like what Mike said. I, I I agree. I think it was real. I think it, it was, was real. Zest, it, it was zesty. It was Super zesty. zesty. You know, I'm not gonna review the KFC sauce. You saved it. All right. So your sponsor okay, is safe. I am gonna eat it right now because I I dunked it. <laughs> that's a that's a good little tidbit you gave us right there, Fuentes. KFC got a top tier sauce game too. That's, they don't talk about it enough. They but only have one they're, sauce. They're sauces. Though, Brian. This is it. They like to emphasize their sauces. I went no, there they and have, I said, they give have me, the barbecue. They I said, give a, me all a, your sauces. And all they gave me was the KFC sauce. Once again, location. Now, we know that the Izzy and the main thing was, wasn't a bit. Was the merch store meltdown a bit? Because I've heard from my sources that the whole plan was go out there with some ridiculous price. Get Samson to be the bullseye. And then have him interjectingly that's not a word but forget about it become the topic of ire to raise purchases because it's getting back at samson is this a real i mean it's i i don't polynesians I don't know on the this. line fuentes yeah. that's a big one you could uh, get mike ryan back on mystery crate yeah, with that and amin that, that brothers mean one more than anything but the thing about the okay so the merch store yeah i have a lot of i have a lot of ideas for the merch store i don't know anything about the back end business part of it I uh, I know that I know, I know that they took it down because um, we just had like issues with the with the with the company we were using. They like weren't good at customer service, and there was a lot of people that weren't you know they just weren't getting their shirts. You know where they get the wrong shirt, they didn't know who to talk to, and that was a big deal. And that's why it was down for so long. I think I think the main problem with the merch store was the back end more than products and prices and all that stuff. Stuff with Samson, I don't know. I don't know enough. I really don't. I, I know that that there's a way that I wanted the merch store to be, oh. and I express that I express that, to, and I express that to people who may be able to influence those decisions. Uh, it's a work in progress. I'm hoping that my ideas come to fruition. When they do, I'll gladly send you a message and be like, "Hey, your boy," you know. Okay. So, uh, but until then, I I really don't know about that. Honestly, that's like the one thing you told me about that I really don't know about, Mike. All, I don't know how much Sam, I don't know how much Samson's involved. I don't know how legit uh, okay, upset so, Dan is. So we I don't know actually if for those of you like conspired that. that that feels like fuel to the fire. There, Fuentes doesn't know how involved David Samson is, and he's been said like, is it a bit that he's even involved at all here? He, he might he he might be doing everything. He might be doing nothing. I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't See, know enough about the so, the, end, the back end of it. It's like, is innocence good enough to save? Like, is is ignorance good ignorance, enough to yeah, save? Not innocence. Is ignorance good enough to save the Polynesian sauce? I just don't know. I just don't know. Mm, I'm going to say no, it's not. And in case you're wondering okay. why. You just wanted to eat the sauce. Yeah, I just wanted to eat the sauce. <laughs> and also right here, another addition to your <sighs> sauce cast idea, the sauced sauce cast. You drink, get sauced, and review sauces. Kimchi sour? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. It like it's did just... you guys see when I popped it open, it like super bubbled on me and it was like mm. crazy bubbling. I think that's because of the kimchi. So this is actually kind of spicy, kind of sour. I'm actually digging it. It I don't know if it was too much with the zesty sauce and that influenced it. I can't talk yeah. about KFC because you saved it, but let's see how it plays with the Polynesian. You're like a walking stereotype. Yeah, you're gonna go to Tummy X City in a second. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Actually, All right, so I while, am kind of feeling that. Yeah. <laughs> while he <while, laughs> uh, deals good. with that, what's the deal with all the tension currently? Like, is the show okay? Does does Metal Arc have a conflict policy where, like, there just there needs to be beef worked out on the air every few weeks? Like, it's kind of like you know when a show where they kill off a main character and you're like, damn, wasn't expecting that. Well, you can't be doing it every three weeks because that. What's going on here? Like, just let who, us know what you know, because you know a lot. Who who are we killing off? I don't I don't have tension. <laughs> I'm chilling. Like, I'm 
Type in the chat, like man. Who are we killing off? Everybody, er, Levitar, everybody, lo- everybody likes me. Like I, I like I'm having, I'm having a good time. You know, so I mean, um, I don't know. Oh. I, I don't, I don't have those problems. You know, when, when we go into mystery crate, everybody's having a good time. He yeah. hit us with the. I don't know nobody. I don't know nothing. I don't see nothing. Okay, that's that's between. I don't even know really what you're talking about. But that kind of <laughs> implies that there is something that exists among someone. No, I don't know. I, I don't know. What happened between Dan and Billy Gill? The whole they yeah. apparently weren't talking, huh? You got any any deets on that? By the way, Polynesian solid sauce. It's kind of a single note though. Too sweet. Too Reminds sweet. me of like yeah, a little too sweet. Kind of like a star running back where all he can do is run. So maybe like a Derek So you're Henry. mad he's only, yeah. he's only asked to do his job? Yeah, only asked to do. Yeah. And he does you know what I love? You did a little bit of Polynesian sauce, and then you put like Frank's Red Hot on top of it. Ooh. Yeah, you get a little Buffalo Buffalo Frank's Red Hot. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah a little. So you like mean this Polynesian right sauce. here? Yes. But is that the Buffalo it. Should, or yeah. the regular? Is that the Buffalo or regular? Buffalo. Oh, there you go. There we go. Let's see. Let's see. You can't do this now. See, now you guys taken. You guys are embracing the sauce cast. You know what? Say that's it, another say thing. It. <laughs> that's another thing I don't like, right? So uh I had this idea, I think it was with I forgot who it was, Tony, I don't know what it was. And I go, why don't we review like when a fast food place comes out with new items, we'll do a review about it. And they went to me, oh no, but that's like Pernoy when he does pizza. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Noy's not the first guy that fucking reviewed pizza. Who the fuck? Like, he doesn't have a monopoly on fucking food things because he did it first. I don't give a shit. You know, like, so you just got to do it better. So you know what? I'm still doing the sauce cast. And my first episode is going to be buffalo dipping sauce and Polynesian sauce. You know what you Too need, Mike? You I'm need a new right team. Because I don't know if the, what happened with Billy Gill and Dan. Nah, you, need, well, you need a new team, Copyright. Mike. I'm posting this. I'm I, creating the whole I need a whole because... audience. No, 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 because he has a lot of really good ideas. He's not talking <laughs> stupid. He's talking like a man who has like LinkedIn resume, social media credentials, <laughs> because he's not saying the wrong things. Doing something that already exists is usually a good sign that it works. It's a and copycat league, copycat league, bro. I mean, NFL. come on, right? So if you had a team behind you to help you pump these ideas out, I mean, maybe you could, you know, if you had to start a media company of your own, what would it be called? Media company of my own. Thoughts on that mixture right there, guys. It's good, right? It's good. It's good. That's all it that, gives it good. exactly what it needs. We were talking it's, one it gives, note. It, it gives a little kick, a little tang, a little, a little kick. spice. A little, yeah, the acidity. A little vinegar the, flavor. The acidity. Yeah. Is that, am I getting there? Acidic, as, as, you know? Gives they it, lose some points because you shouldn't have to sauce up the sauce. gives you the right pH yeah. balance to make your mouth go boom. I'm going to I'm going to find a way to put these two things together and bottle them my own and just call it, you know, like uh I don't know, something. Fuentes you know is table- fuego. Yeah, Fuentes it's- fuego sauce or whatever and then I'll table that with my media company name. There you go. We'll figure that there out. There you go. At the same time. We'll what is together. the what is the one idea that if you had to stake your entire career at Metal Lark, you need them to do and they just won't pull the trigger on? The oh, one I thing don't... where you're like, this is a hit, like foot girls, right? Like, it's I'm not foot. a fan of feet, foot. but I understand that foot, foot girls foot. is something that might foot. get people who are into foot, foot girls foot. a thing. So I'm just saying foot, foot girls a lot foot. because feet and foot. foot girls and toes and big toes and pinky toes, I get it. But what is your foot girls? Foot, foot, What foot. is my foot girls? Foot. Your diamond, foot. your uh, money maker. Foot, foot. You your mean, so GameStop, not... your Bitcoin. Not, not mm. sauce cast? Mm. Uh, um, I don't know, man. I got a few, but, but I, I, if I had to like settle it down, mm. oh, I can't tell you. I know what it is that I can't tell you. That's yeah, the sign like, of a good one. That's yeah, the sign of a good one. He knows it, it, it might. He knows because it might, it, folks. No, because it might happen, and when it does happen, I'll be happy to take all the credit. But I don't want to give away the game, and then it ends up getting tabled or, you know, something like that. Because then I sound like I'm a guy who just brags about a lot of shit that never happens. So. Yeah, See, but I have one. Yeah. So hold on. I have though. one that 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 I really really like. It just requires a lot of production elements, and and I'll, you know what? I'll probably bring it back around after the Super Bowl. Good, good. See, people Super, Super Bowl time is busy for us, so people think I'm joking about being a Fuentes fanatic. Everyone knows Mike Ryan's number one, but I am a Fuentes fanatic, and here's why, folks: ideas. Fuentes has has shown in his time on the show 
that he's an idea man. He he pitches ideas and behind the scenes I can tell he's trying to give ideas to people. He's you know on a mission. If you listen to Mystery Crate, you know he tried to help Chris Cody with his Instagram followers. Chris Cody, you lost me, brother, because you didn't put out enough content. You should have listened to Fuentes. All right, he tried to yeah. give you ideas to help him. Fuentes, you're behind the scenes. You got the show on TikTok. We're on TikTok now, the Fan Levitard show. And I I resisted it because I'm like, those young kids are on it. But honestly, I now I now see why. It's actually been one of the easiest platforms to like grow on and actually mm -hmm. create engagement. Like you post some video on there, it, it's like the amount of likes. Anyway, that's boring talk. Nobody wants to know about that. No, it's just it's the, the, the brilliance ideas. of TikTok to me. Yeah, the brilliance of TikTok to me is the ease of use. Mm -hmm. and and how easy it is to scroll right because like yo man sometimes you're on there you're just flying right whereas youtube like you'll sit you'll watch then you have to like actively click on something else yeah there's autoplay but they give you too much time like like so tiktok man you're just rolling through i think i think tiktok is like one of the most brilliant fucking entertainment apps that there's ever been like it's like there are times i'm like going into the bathroom and I sit down to do my business and I'm like, fuck yeah, it's TikTok time. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm like, Whoa. And, and like at least, yeah, at least five yeah. minutes when I'm doing my business, just, just on, you know, swiping. It's good. You know? And then the algorithm's good, which is terrible. It's probably the downfall of mankind. But, yeah. You know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So are you saying the way that Billy's evil cat. Hey, oh. With his ideas. Is Mike like a good boy? Like, is he like the good, like, because I feel some like contrast here because a lot of your ideas are, I don't, I ain't hear a bad one yet. <laughs> I'm like, a, if Billy's an evil cat, man, but I love Billy, man. Billy's great. Like, he's funny as hell. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a hard worker. He really is. You got to be to be with Stugats. But mm. um, I, I would say I'm a, hmm. Give me, give me uh, you know what? I'll call myself a positive penguin. A because positive I'm really, I, yeah, because I'm like, yeah. I'm really pushing, like, like Chris Cody's been trying to do this. Um, like, he wants to do, he wants to try stand up comedy. It's and good. I'm trying to get him to do it. And I'm like, bro. Like you're going to see these people out here. You're probably never going to see them again. Mm -hmm. So fuck it. Mm -hmm. Let it rip. And the, you know, and you know, it is the first one's the hardest one, you know, once you get out, then after that, it's, and then, and then it's funny. Cause when he's in there, he seems so confident. Like he's the last guy I would think would ever be any kind of timid about being on stage, you know, especially like dark stages. Like I, you know, I've been on stages before and you probably see the first four people and that's mm -hmm. it. After that it's nothing, you know? So I'm, I'm going to get him out there. I have, I have a friend who holds comedy shows in Miami. I'm going to, I'm going to get him out there. You know what was a telltale sign that he might suffer from that? Hmm. When he said he doesn't know what to do with his hands when he wants to dance. Where he's like, I don't... Because when you're thinking of that shit, then that yeah. means you think of a lot. Which means you can think of, what if I bomb? And, yeah. you know, I, I, I have a lot of similar traits with Chris. Where it kind of, it's, it's a front, but it's a front because of protection. You're protecting yeah. yourself, right? You make jokes, da-da-da-da. If I control the situation, da-da-da-da. You can't control that shit when you're on stage. But it yeah, don't but matter. You know yeah, when you, but when, like, I've, I have a lot of these in life. Yeah. Uh, the worst thing doing is being like, yo, I could have started doing this 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you know? And then it's like, shit, <laughs> like, I, I, you know? So that's like, even though, like, Chris is closer to my age, I, uh, yeah. like, when I meet, like, young people now, I'm like, what do you feel like doing? Just do mm. it. Just do it and go 100% into it. You could always start over, but it's don't good. get 10 years down the line and be like, well, fuck, you know? Yeah. Like voice acting. Like, yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, see, you know what I just realized? This whole this whole entire time, YouTube audiences heard this, podcast audiences heard this, but I never shared my audio with you guys. I actually have a soundboard on OBS, and I've been uh, mixing in the <laughs> the Joe Rose sounds of, yeah. Yeah, mm. that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, sir, thank you for your time. It has been a delight to talk to you. I, you know what? I was maybe, when it comes to Izzy and Amin, I was one of the people that, when I first saw it, I all thought it was genuine and it became a bit. It was genuine, something that the show worked into a bit. Then I got on the Reddit and all this stuff and I felt like, no, maybe it was a bit. There was people out there saying it was a bit. And felt like it was on the bit, but everything, everyone, at, since I went through it, I'm like, I think it's a bit, everyone from the show, the way they've talked about it has made it seem like it's genuine. I've said that it's, 
I've said that it's a bit, but I think I need to come around and admit that was that was real. They maybe turned it into a little bit. There's there's definitely something there, and I think how long, how long ago? How long ago was that? Three whole months. Three months about. Well, four. Actually, only four only three months. Four months ago. Oh. I haven't so. I haven't seen them together since. Yeah. So. There you go. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And then and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing yeah, wrong with that, right? Same thing. Like, I think too, that's the biggest that, point. You cannot say. fuck with people you work with and then just you know, not everyone's meant to be friends. That's why y'all don't hang out with Lucy. It's kind of fucked up. But you know, it's 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 Whoa. I'm joking. We yeah. we love we love Lucy. But the yeah. fact that y'all, you know, y'all don't be hanging yeah. out with her like we heard, because we heard we heard some things when she came on the show. And you know she was like, "Y'all don't be coming to the swap oh, that, meets." Y'all don't... that that people don't hang out with her. Well, the 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 main thing I think keeping Lucy back is that Lucy is yeah like, twenty five years old and everybody else is pushing forty with kids. It's so good. it's like she's so the younger person, Jessica. Mm. They hang out a lot. They also live close to each other. Mm. Cody mm. is fifty minutes north from where we record. Roy is fifty minutes north. Uh, Mike Ryan is like fifty minutes west. Of where yeah. we, we are right so it's like it's tough to get keep out your maps fans figure out where all the I, people live yeah, so if I, you visit miami you can drive around yeah. and visit every single person and almost run over lucy houses. yeah, yeah. she leaves did, the playground i did i did tell lucy that i owe her a it's night good. out because i don't live that far from her so i i gotta i gotta maybe, you know good. our basil is this week even though that's you know so we'll see all you need is one good night and you don't never got to give her another one that that's true that's a good point hey remember that time no yeah that's it yeah <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come to a close here on our YouTube stream. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this. I was all over the place because I'm reviewing sauces and trying to do the stream and move around different camera cuts and whatnot. Got to work on it. Got to practice. But trying something new. Podcast audience, thank you. Fuentes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Another episode of the Fan Levitard Show. The fastest growing Dan Levitard Show fan YouTube channel out there. The Fan Levitard Show podcast. We are the fastest growing Dan Levitard Show fan YouTube channel. Without a doubt. No doubt there. Okay. So thank you for joining us, everybody.